Okay, so today we'll be covering the uh, the last part of where we stopped last week uh, uh, using the use this package. So we'll be exploring some the series of function which uh, we we are unable to cover for last week. And the first uh, family of functions uh, in which I will be discussing today is the browse uh, the browse family of function that is coming from the use this because I categorize this uh, function because they have something to do similar to each other. So the first one in which I'll be looking at uh, is the browse uh, underscore GitHub uh, function. So this function, what this function, what this function basically does, this function takes, uh, it takes us to the various uh, web pages associated with the projects. Uh, often it can be an R package and returns, uh, it returns uh, the target uh, URL of that project uh, in which uh, uh, we are we are working on. So if it is an R package, uh, basically what they do this course is that the the browse underscore GitHub function is going to look at the description of the package because in the description of the package uh, it can grab uh, the URL of this package. We can be grabbed from the description of that package, or it can be also obtained using this get git remote uh, function. So because when we use the git uh, remote minus v verbose, which is going to give us uh, the URL of that specific uh, git repository in which we are working on. And it's going to also tell us if we have access right to either push or fetch uh, from the GitHub. So those, those are browse family of functions. Uh, the, what this function does, the, like this other one, browse underscore package, is to browse for specific package in GitHub. So in this case, we can just say browse underscore package, then the package, we can just give the package name to be maybe maybe GG, GG plot two. I can just switch to my house studio because I also create uh, an house studio here. Yeah, so I can just quickly say uh, library. Thing is, use this that we are using. Then we say browse underscore package. Then which package do I want to browse? Let me say ggplot2. So it's going to just take me uh, to the URL. So it's going to give us specific URL uh, httpgplot2. If you press one, it's going to take you to this website. If you press two, it's going to take you. Uh, so the GitHub repository, I think this is the, the graph. Then if you have issues, so it's, we are going to, we are, we are, it's just going to give us options uh, for we to select. So which, whichever options are uh, uh, in which we take, so it's going to take us uh, to that site, to the site, specific site. So we also have Browse GitHub, I have done this. Browse package is to browse specific package. Browse GitHub is going to take us to the GitHub repository of that specific package in which we are browsing. Maybe we say uh, tidyr, so it's going to take us to tidyr GitHub repository so we can check for. Then uh, this other, I found these other functions are uh, to be very, very useful. Browse GitHub issues. So this one, we can use it to browse issues that are specific to maybe to some to any R package in which we are interested in making. Uh, we can also help to make contribution. So in the browse issue, so in that case, they specify the package. Then we can specify the package name in which we want to browse if there are any issues in the package. Then if we know the specific issue number in which we want to browse, so we can just put uh, the issue number there. But if we, do, we are not sure of which specific issue number we can omit that, it's going to list the entire issue that are, that are open, that are related to the package in which uh, we are working on, on that moment. Then we are going to then, uh, this other function from the, from the browse family of function is very also very useful. Uh, the, the browse GitHub pools. So it's going to browse all the pull requests in which we have specific to the uh, to that uh, package or to the to the to the package or the project in which 
we want to browse. So we, we are going to check all the all the pull requests relating to that package. So and it's very uh very very useful. Then we also have uh, the browse uh, GitHub action. So this one we can use it in browsing uh, GitHub action uh, that are related uh, to specific uh, to to the package uh, in which we are in which we are working on. We also have the browse Travis. So this one is going to take us uh, to the Travis site. So maybe uh, the extension it can be .com or .org, which is organization or commercial. So we also have browse circle CI, which is for continuous integration and also browse cran. So this, all these browse family of functions. So what they do explain in the documentation, they are mainly, the main aim is they are, they are, attacking, they are targeting specific URL that are related uh, to, to, the, to the package or to the project in which we are we are interested in. I don't know if uh, there are any uh, comments or contribution before I move to the next uh, family of functions. So this. I just, my only comment is uh, uh, like, I need to get in the habit of using these because I do this manually all the time. And this is great. I love these. I think, uh, <laughs> um, think the next the next family of function is create a download URL. I think let's see what is there in this. Okay, so this other one uh, help is help us to download and unpack a zip file. It, the details on the internal helper. So this other one is that. We have a specific uh, URL. Maybe we have a specific uh, URL. Maybe like a, a uh, like a GitHub repository. Okay, so we have we have click on the code. We have copied the zip file, but we want we want to share. Uh, maybe we need the specific URL uh, in which we can we can share with someone in which they can click on that URL. They are able to download. And so we can just use this function, create a uh, download URL, pass in the URL in which we want to create. So once we pass in the URL there, it's going to, it's going to generate a, a URL for us in which we can use in downloading, in downloading items. So, but it's mainly, mainly this URL, mainly what they do explain is, is targeting GitHub, is targeting Dropbox, and it's also targeting Google Drive URLs as copied from the web browser. So these are the three uh, URL uh, in which they do ex they do specify. So the, for the destination directory, then we need to specify the directory where we want uh, our files to be saved when we download them. So we need to specify uh, the destination directory where we want this file uh, to, to be saved because it's mainly similar to the to this family of function, which is the use underscore cost uh, function, which we can also use in downloading materials. So there's the zip file part to the local zip file. Maybe we have this zip file in a local folder in our machine, so we can just specify the part to that zip file. So it's going to what? Uh, pull everything down and it's going to download its uh, is going to download it uh, into a uh, system. So I think uh, they do give some examples. They, they did show some example here. For example, this is a Dropbox. Okay, so for, for we to make this uh, to be something in which we, we are able to, uh, to download, we need to change this last, uh, we need to change the last uh, number there from zero to, to one. So once we do that, this link, is now going to be downloadable. Once we share with somebody, somebody can just click on the link and it, it will be able to what, download uh, the, the files that, that are safe, uh, that has been saved in that link. I think that is all what we have for the, for the create download URLs, mainly for to generate URL in which we can use that URL uh, to download uh, files.
I don't know if there are any comments uh, before we move uh, to the next uh, family of function. Uh, nope, not for that one for me. Okay, so I just close this again. Okay, so this edit file and edit templates, I think I'll just try and see because they are similar to each other. So edit file and edit templates. Maybe this one uh, is this one uh, has to do with maybe we have a specific uh, file. We have a specific file in a project uh, uh, in which we want to what edit. Okay, so we can use uh, this edit edit underscore file function. So here we specify the parts. We give the parts to that file, maybe the R markdown file or an R script that we want to edit. We just specify the parts to that file. Then open, we can specify the R lang is underscore interactive to make this thing interactive so that it's going to open in the R studio. We can just do our manual edit, then we save it. Then for the edit underscore templates. So this one, we have the templates is always set uh, to null. Then we have open, which is the same Erlang, is using the Erlang to make it uh, to be interactive where we can just click and we do our manual editing. So for the parts, we need to specify the parts uh, to the target file in which we want to edit, then open, whether to open the file for interactive editing. So this is, I think this is going to be optional because we, it, whether we want to open it interactively for us to edit or not. So we need to specify that here using this outlang uh, function. Then the template, the target template file, if not specified, existing template file of, offered for interactive uh, selection. I think here they just uh, gave an example that if for us, edit file, which is what? The description. Otherwise, edit file should come from what? The Git. Uh, Git uh, config. So I think that's uh, edit file. I think that is that. This one is just a small uh, function. Okay. So edit file, edit template. Okay. I think this one is very, very, very useful. Issue close community and issue reflex needed. Okay, this one is like, uh, this one is being used uh, by, by the Tidyverse. Uh, it, it really is very, by the Tidyverse team, they use it in managing issues relating to their project. Because if you look at the Tidyverse, they have a lot of issues for them to deal with. So like the issue, issue close community, this one helps the Tidyverse team to close an issue because it is not a bug report of future requests and points the author towards our studio community as a better place to discuss usage of that issue. So once they use issue close community, so they can, they, they, once they use this, they will use it to close that specific issue and it's going to direct uh, the user uh, that is opening this issue that the best place uh, for them to discuss about this issue, they can open it uh, in the our studio community so this issue can be easily resolved there. So the second family of function is issue reflex needed. So this one labels the issue, is used to labels the issue with reflex labels and give the author some advice about what is needed. So this one is giving the author of this, that open this issue uh, in that GitHub repository that they need to provide more context to this in order for them to get, uh, in order for the Tidyverse team to help them to fix, uh, to resolve this issue, they need to provide uh, more information. They need to show a more example so that the, the, the issues uh, can be easily resolved. So this issue close community. So first of all, we need to give, specify uh, the issue number. Maybe we can see, in the GitHub repository, we have 200 issues. Maybe we want to refer to issue 200. 
So I need to specify the number is equals to 200, then reprex four. So, so if I should run this, in that case, you are going to close that specific issue in that project in which uh, you are working on. And it's going to direct the user that opened that issue that the best place uh, for them to discuss about this issue uh, can be the our studio uh, community. So this issue then for the issue reflex needed. So this one, we, we still have to specify the, the issue number. We need to specify the issue number. Then it's going to now tag uh, that issue from GitHub that, yeah, this issue we need, uh, we need to provide more, we need to provide reflex in order uh, for them to be able to solve uh, this issue. I think this one, they just gave an example. They just gave an example here. If forced to check for condition issue, close community, which issue is 12, reflex force. Otherwise, it should be issue reflex needed, which is issue number is uh, 241. So that is basically uh, what we got uh, from these two family of functions. I think they are very, uh, very, very useful. Are there any comments uh, before we proceed to the next uh, functions? Any comments, any contribution? Nothing on my end. Uh, I'll just say I, I really, like, I don't know, I don't have enough issues to deal with to worry about it too much, but I like the idea of making a version of this to, you know, point people over to R4DS. Um, so I like having these as templates for ideas of how to deal with things. So I'm, I'm going to have to dig into these more. I think that is, also, that is a very good idea also. Yeah, what's, okay, rename files, okay. So let's see, rename files. Okay, so, this one, this family of function is basically uh, intended for us to rename, to rename our files when we are working in a project. Uh, but uh, they did mention in this that we should do this. Uh, we should do this to our own detriment because we need to be very careful when we are dealing using this family of functions because they do recommend that for us to use this. Effectively, we must be familiar with version control. We must be using version control because we might make issue, we might make mistake while renaming, renaming this file. We can revert back uh, to the initial version of that file. So they do recommend that for us to use the, this rename underscore files function, uh, we should be using uh, version control in our project. So, so how this is done? We have move our old to what are new, so how do we use this function? So we just have to pass the rename underscore file. We give the name of the old file, then we specify uh, the name of the new file. So that's all for, for this function. We just have to specify the, the name of the old file, then we give it a new name, then, the, the, then it's going to rename the file. But for us to do that, we need to, we need to have initialized version control in our project so that in case we want uh, to revert back to the initial version of those of that file in which we are working with, it becomes very easy for us to, to revert back. I think that is a very, this one is very short. So it's just one line, old, the old name, then we specify, uh, we specify the new name and that will do the tricks for us. I, okay. I just, I love utilities like this that, like I, I wrote a thing to do this, I don't know, a, a few weeks ago and it was already there. I, I didn't have to do that. <laughs> uh, I wish, okay, I wish so... there were like a rename function um, equivalent. So operating it out at the level of the files necessarily, but at the name of the function. There is um, there's rename and scope in our studio under the code tab, 
but it only works within a single file. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> So, okay, we are the use underscore function. I think that is where we are now. The use underscore function. So let's see what we got. The use underscore function. So the use underscore cost, use underscore zip, create download URL. I think we have covered the create uh, download uh, URL. So what this family of function does is that they help us. Uh, they help us to download files. They help us to download files that have been stored somewhere, maybe in a specific GitHub repository, in uh, in Dropbox. Maybe that file is in, saved in Dropbox, or that file is saved in a Google Drive. So this use underscore course function. So once we pass that function in, we just need to pass in the link. Then we can specify the specific directory uh, where we want this file to be saved. So once we just run that, but before we can do that, we need to have an, our internet connection need to be on. So once we just run that, it's going to download, it's going to download all those zip, all those material, and it's going to unzip them. And we are going to have access to those. Uh, files within our our studio because it's going to open the entire pro new project so we are going to have access to all those files in the our studio that is for the use underscore course use underscore zip and create a download url which i have already covered above so we are going to have access to those uh those material then we we can make use, I think, tidy download. I think uh, that is just what this function is used for. Okay, so the next, I think we have use underscore Jenkins. Yep. So use underscore Jenkins, they said the function adds a basic Jenkins file to, to our package to the project root directory. And the Jenkins file stages take two, of course, to make and to, so calling this function will also run use underscore make. So once we call this function, it's also going to call this other function uh, that is coming from the use this, which is the use uh, underscore make. If a make file does not already exist at the project roots, I think it's going to create uh, is going to create uh, uh, is going to create that uh, make file for us. So it's going to create that file for us and it puts it in the project uh, in which uh, we are working on. And then the next under the use under is the use underscore our studio. I think this one is going to is going to make that project to be an house to, that we are working on to be, uh, to be, it's going to add our studio project infrastructure to the project in which uh, uh, in which we are working on. And it's mainly similar to this function, which is create underscore package for people that are creating a package. I think we have covered this before. So if you use, use underscore house studio, so it's just going to populate it with the our studio uh, project uh, infrastructure. It's going to add this to the. It's also going to add the our studio files to what the git ignore file, and also it's going to add the our studio to the dot r building build ignore if a project is a what is a package. So if it's a package, it's going to play, place that into the r build ignore. So it's going to ignore that file when we want to build it. So what how do we do it? Say use underscore our studio, the line ending. It can be either POSIX, it can also be a Windows. So I think this, this one is a bit, uh, this one is straightforward. We know that if we are using the use underscore our studio, is to create the our studio uh, project infrastructure. It's going to add it into the project uh, in which in which we are 
what what do I do? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Okay, so it's, it's just going to add it to the project. So the last is the use, let's see the use underscore zip. I think I have touched about this. This one is mainly for us if we want to, if we want to download, if we want to download, if we have a zip file, download and unpack a zip file in our studio. So this one is very useful. It's similar to the, to the use underscore course. So we just use the use underscore zip. We pass in the URL where we can find that zip file. We give it a destination directory, then clean up if our lang is interactive and else false. So this one is mainly used. We can use it in downloading a zip file. Maybe we have a zip file somewhere. We want to download it and use it in our work. So we can just use uh, the, the use underscore zip function. I think also, if I might correct, I think the best R also has the use the on zip function. I think, yeah, because I think I was working with a zip file. I think David, yesterday, I think I worked with a zip file, but I did not know that we have this function also, uh, it also, it also exists in the use this. I think I was using uh, the on zip function from uh, from Basal. So I don't know if there are any contribution before we go into the next uh, family of function. I think I'm good. <laughs> go ahead. Okay. okay, so this one is like a right over and rights union. So let's see what they got to write over. So it's mainly write into or over a file. So maybe we want to overwrite a file, help us to write into or over a new pre-existing file. It's designed mostly for internal use. File is written with what UTF-8 encoding. So this one, we can say rights union, then we give a path. I think this is going to be a path to the targeted file in which we want to write over. Then the lines, okay, we specify the lines, the inquired force. So we can also have write over, we specify the path to target file, the lines we want to write, then the acquired is false. So they do specify that the path is for path to target file. It is created if it does not exist, but the parent directory must exist. Then lines, character vector of lines for rights union. These are lines to add to the target file. If not already present for rights over, these are the exact lines desired for the target file. So, so for the quiet, so we can say this is logical, whether to, to message about what is happening. So it can be true or false. Then the content character vector of lines in which we want to, we want to add into the function. I think here they made a, an example here where they have dot all, where we have set WD, that which is set uh, to the temporary uh, directory. Then they are using forward slides, don't show this. So, okay. Then they have to say the right union. What do they want to write a file? The name of the is a file, letters one to three. So it's now adding A, B, C to what? To a file. So this, then when we say the read lines, a file, so it's going to read those three letters in which we have written here, it's going to read them. Then we can have rights union, which we give it the name of a file, then letters one to five. So it's now adding D, E to a file because we have gotten A, B, C. So what is left is just D and E. So it's adding these two letters to this. So it's putting everything here. So when we read the lines of a file, it's A, B, C, D, and E. 
So we can also have write over, which is another file, which is the name of a new file. Then letters of the file is going to be one to three, which is A, B, C. So if you read the lines, it's going to be A, B, C. We can write it over another file, letters one to three. If false, will error if user isn't present to prove the overwrite. Then otherwise, write over another file, letters three to one. So we can just do uh, uh, our cleanup file dot remove the remove uh, the two files, which shows that it's true. Then they say don't show set wd to the dot old uh, wd, which is uh, the initial uh, the initial temporary uh, directory. I don't know if there are any comments or further contribution on this. One kind of naive question, and maybe I missed it, is uh, so so this is, I guess the vector of things that's passed is just a, a single a single line, right? So if one wanted to write multiple lines, you'd have to invoke this function multiple times. Am I getting that right? right. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, no, you can have, um, you can send, it, it's a character vector. So each each one is a line. Each oh, I got member it. Okay. of that vector, um, or you know, you could also just paste them together, but it you don't need to. Like it, it puts each one in as a line into the the file. Um, yeah, I've oh, done, got it, got it. Yeah. yeah, I did. I just did something kind of similar, although I'm doing a more complicated thing that kind of checks to make sure that there aren't conflicts and things. But um, again, this is one of those that. It's a nice little convenience that it's nice that she already took care of it, basically. Okay, thank you very much uh, for your contribution. Uh, I think uh, what we got is just uh, the last family of function, which has to do with a uh, function that is mainly meant to construct uh, the user interface uh, so let's see ui user interface of the code so so these functions are used to construct i think the user interface of use this and they do explain that we should use them in our own package so that our use underscore function works uh, the same way as, uh, as use this. So the first we have the UI underscore function can be broken down into the four main categories. We have uh, the UI underscore line, the UI underscore done, UI underscore to do, UI underscore oops, and UI underscore info. These are the first category in which uh, they split the function into. They also have the UI underscore stop, UI underscore uh, one. They also have UI underscore year and UI underscore note. In line style, we have the UI field, UI value, UI paths, UI code, and UI on sets. So what these functions are uh, that the does is that they use this. So like uh, the UI underscore line. So the X is equals to a character we need to create a character uh, vector of what we want to create in that uh, user interface. Then the environment, they are using uh, the parent, uh, the parent uh, frame. Then UI underscore to do family of function, the same thing, just like what we have in the UI underscore line, the X is still going to be our character. Environment, they are still using the parent, uh, the parent frame. UI underscore done, I think they follow, and UI underscore oops, and also info, they all follow the same, they, they all follow the same approach, just as I as I line above. But the UI underscore code block X, which is gonna be the character, then in this case, we are just adding a new line which is copy, which is how long is interactive to make it to be interactive. 
but we are still making use of the same parent frame as our, as our environment. Then the UI underscore stop, UI underscore one, and UI, they are still following the same approach, but UI underscore silence. So in this one, it's just passing in the code. So let's see what are uh, each of these arguments uh, that are going into this function, what they are doing. X, for the X there, they say it must be a, a character vector. We need to create a character vector for block style, condition, and questions. Each element of the vector becomes, becomes a line and the result is processed by glue. For inline style, each element of the vector becomes an entry in a comma separated list. Then for the dot environment, it's used to ensure that glue gets the current, uh, correct environment for, for expert, expert use only. Then for copy, if true, the session is interactive and clip R package is installed, we'll copy the code block to the clipboard. So it's going to copy the entire code block into our, uh, into our clip, clipboard. Then for the code, code to execute with the use, usual UI outputs is silent. So the set are the code to be silent. So if specific base, if specified parts will be displayed relative to this part. So, so how in this, they gave just a few example of new value, which is Oxnard, then UI underscore done with the passing the UI underscore field, the name, then set to UI underscore value, which is uh, the new the new value. So the UI underscore to do, which redocuments with UI underscore code, then dev tools, they, they are calling dev tools documents uh, to document this. So redocument with dev tools documents. So when we now look at the UI code block, which we create our X, which is a character vector of line one, line two, and line three. So when we now run that, we now see we have line one, line two, and, uh, and we, have, uh, we have line three. I think, uh, I think that, is, uh, that is all based on what, uh, was in the Google Sheets that you shared. That's great. This is this family of functions, um, like everything today, or like a lot of things today, at least. I just they're, um, they're just nice to be able, like I use them in my personal in this package to give myself messaging that looks like use this, and it's nice that she you know has those all set up so you can just kind of make pretty things. <laughs> um, so cool, uh, that is use this then. Um, so John, uh, I guess, I'm kind of yeah, curious yeah. Uh, if I could interject about, about this, the, like the UI family. Um, uh, like, I, I'm curious, like, has anyone used these? So I think you mentioned, John, you, you're using in your, your, your package, but I, in my mind, I kept on going back and forth of like, is this useful or should I just use Crayon? <laughs> um, so like kind of it, build my own. Right. It depends what you're doing. Like if you're extending use this, then I would definitely use these because they um, have the same feel. Uh, if you're not extending use this, then I wouldn't use these because you need to import use this. So I wouldn't import use this just for these. Um, so yeah, I guess that's where I would put it. Uh, they do have um, CLI now. It's a new-ish uh, package that is kind of a package just for these things. Um, I'm actually, I'm not sure about uh, the overlap. Let's see. Um, yeah, sorry. So Crayon is uh, superseded by CLI. 
they say. So CLI is the new version of CRAN. Um, but yeah, either way. <laughs> um, so there's that. And I, I actually do wonder if at some point um, they'll just say, yeah, don't use, or these UI functions just wrap something that's in um, CLI now. So I don't know. Um, but yeah, I've been trying to get in the habit of using CLI for uh, messaging because it does make things much prettier, <laughs> easier to read. And that would be one of the packages that could be on our uh, to read list, actually. Um, so yeah, I guess the, the other thing is, uh, like I said, there's that form. Um, it should be like right at the top of the list um, in, yeah, in the channel. It's, well, I'm gonna delete the message about this meeting and there we go. So yeah, the right there at the top, there's the click or link to the forum. I'll check that out uh, later today and start, you know, see what else we need to do to figure out what's next. Um, now it looks like we, uh, most if not all of us are in here. I don't think you're in here yet, uh, Oilo, if that, that many. But let's see, I think we are starting to get an answer. Um, and what's next? Oh, no, we've still got a tie. <laughs> each each person who voted chose chose a different option for the. No, well, area. we have we have five votes now, and we've got uh, two votes to go to the testing packages next, and two votes to go to advanced our programming next. One vote for meta packages. Um, I can do an instant runoff because that one vote is me, I think, and so I'll just uh, I'll probably go with testing. Um, I'll take a look more though later, but most likely we're going to go through some some testing packages next, I think. Um, and that it's an easy start because naturally, if we're going to go through testing packages next, test that is where to start. It doesn't make sense to start anywhere else. Um, so very likely I will kick off test that next week. Um, but whatever, we'll we'll sort it out. Um, there are lots of things that are kind of in this family of uh, things to know about if you want to get better at using R. It's kind of very, very yeah, vaguely where this uh, club is. Um, yeah. All right, so I will see all of you next week, probably to talk about testing. <laughs> cool. All right. Okay. See you next <laughs> week. Bye. Bye-bye.